Good morning. Oh, it is, I think it's late in the afternoon for you. Or not? It is uh, about five o'clock here in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's great to have you with us. Uh, you are the woman that is wearing, of course, the pin of the SDGs. I yes. <laughs> yeah, a very sharp observation. Yeah. yeah. I think you were the first that will really dive dive into those SDGs and start working with them or not? Uh, yes, I was very honored to be the first uh, Singaporeans to receive the SDG Pioneer uh, the, uh, for green building and uh, a low carbon economy in 2018. Yes, I'm a fan of SDG. <laughs> cool. Now you, are, you, you do live in, in Singapore, I guess? Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, we are. Yeah, one degree north of the equator is hot through the year and uh, sunny weather. I heard that Singapore was the most smart city of us, uh, Derek just said uh, 20 minutes ago on main stage. So, well, wonder if you, there is some stuff about smart, uh, Singapore in your presentation. I would like to give you the, the main stage. Thank you so much. Yeah, let me uh, share my screen. Yes, there it comes. Yeah, can you see that? Uh, yes, I can see it. Okay, yes. yeah. Yeah, okay. now it's working. Okay, just give a bit of uh, context of uh, what uh, City Developments Limited's uh, core business is. Uh, we were uh, actually we were established in Singapore uh, in 1963 with eight employees, and today we are operating uh, in uh, 29 countries and regions. Our core business remain building homes and uh, also commercial property and uh, offices, and we are also one of the major landlord in Singapore. In addition, we have a global footprint of 150 hotels worldwide and. Uh, well, I still remember that at COP25 last year, we were sharing our business case. And uh, when we start 2020, uh, climate change was really the center, uh, taking the center stage. And uh, even at the World Economic Forum this year in January, um, it, the consensus is climate risks are systemic risks for humanity and also business. And all the top uh, business risks are all climate related and biodiversity related and, and extreme weather and so on and so forth. And uh, incidentally, the 10th risk is actually uh, infectious disease. And uh, of course, there are a lot of global goals that our company have been aligned, you know, have aligned with. And of course, Paris Agreement being the top of it. And uh, we were the first uh, Singapore developers to uh, have achieved a SPTI validated target. And uh, last year, it uh, UN uh, Climate Action Week in September, we joined the first pioneer batch of 87 companies to pledge to support the UN Global Compact business ambition for 1.5 degree. And TCFD has been embraced in our business and our strategy since 2017. And uh, uh, based on the recommendation, we actually conducted two climate change scenario planning. Uh, 2018, that was before IPCC uh, recommendation, uh, we adopted two degree and four degree warmer scenario. After the IPCC report 2019, we expanded the scope of our key markets to US, China, uh, London, and uh, of course, uh, Singapore. We focus only on 1.5 degree and 2 degree warmer scenario. And uh, being a developer, you know, we are fully supportive of uh, World Green Building Council's advocacy of advancing net zero. And uh, in Singapore, our green building master plan is to green 80% of all building in Singapore or, or new building by 2030. So we have about nine years to go. We are now at about 40% mark. Uh, so we are stepping up really fast and furious to green, you know, the rest of the building and to achieve, you know, the, the green mark standard uh, here in Singapore. And of course, SDG is probably the most, you know, powerful common language that con connects the world and uh, with the so called uh, 17 goals and 169 targets. And we have actually embraced 14 out of 17 goals. And uh, apart from global level, we have our own national vision. And thanks for the previous, you know, uh, speaker, Doug, to, you know, to highlight that. And in fact, Singapore has a lot of restriction. We are almost 100%, you know, relying on, you know, uh, uh, an uh, urban population. We have only 1% of the land devoted for farming and really, you know, almost zero natural 
natural resources. So with all these constraints, how do we, you know, uh, and operate and achieve uh, some of our, you know, very humble achievement of like being one of the, you know, uh, uh, the second uh, highest in terms of green coverage. 29% of our uh, overall uh, country is covered with uh, trees and canopies and, and all that. So moving forward, uh, in fact, uh, the Singapore government has renamed the former Ministry for the Environment and Water Resources to the Ministry of Sustainability and the Environment. That actually shows the government's commitment, you know, and uh, towards, you know, adopting sustainability into, you know, the, the national agenda. And we have set many goals on like, you know, for example, 30 by 30, we hope to, you know, we are targeting targeting to produce 30% of Singapore's food source locally by 2030. And we also improve on the transportation, you know, to achieve 20 minutes town and 45 minutes city and uh, by 2040. And uh, by 2040, every we are aiming for every household to only take about 10 minutes to walk to, you know, the, um, uh, a metro station or a bus station. So uh, these are our national goal. And when the national goal is set, it also, you know, increased the pressure for businesses to help to achieve the national goal, whether it is Paris Agreement or Green Building Master Plan. And I think uh, that was all, you know, about yeah, uh, uh, the national, uh, the international goal before COVID. COVID has in fact, apart from causing a lot of disruption to the way we live, work and uh, entertain and, and travel, uh, it has actually that did one good thing, which is accelerating the rapid growth of ESG investment and also integration into business. And investors, you know, like the big, you know, investors like BlackRock and Allion, MSCI have really pushed the agenda and also show data that uh, sustainable indices and, uh, you know, the uh, ESG focus uh, stocks have outperformed their counterpart. And, and, Actually, BlackRock even, you know, uh, punished 50 over companies uh, for using the voting right for insufficient climate action. So as a business, how do we make, capture this golden opportunity to really assess to, you know, uh, international investment and to accelerate our green building movement? So this is actually a simplified uh, value creation model that CDL has established since 1995. Uh, the core of our uh, sustainability strategy remain as conserving as reconstruct, which we established in 1995. At that time, and in fact, Singapore or, or Asia has hardly, you know, uh, uh, talk about um, global warming or climate change. So, and uh, we also look at it, in, it will not, uh, in, uh, we do not integrate ESG in silo. We actually uh, integrate it into everything we do in the, from the business strategies to the product to, you know, the branding and to how we engage our stakeholders, the value chain and the community. And we have aligned 14 out of 17 uh, SDG right now. And uh, the, if I can simplify it, uh, our sustainability strategy has four pillars. The first one is integration. Uh, ESG does not work in silo. It has to be integrated. And uh, the second one is innovation. Innovation and adaptation is very important. And uh, without technology and, so, and, so, and the solutions, we can't really move the needle. And what we are aiming at is a low carbon operation and a resilient um, and, uh, infrastructure and economy. And we have to put money where the mouth is. We have to invest in, you know, such innovation, such commitment. And uh, as a listed company, we are an investee. We want to, you know, attract, you know, convince our ESG investors that we are really on track to achieve all the ambitious climate goals. We are also an investor that I'm going to share a little bit more how we invest in some of the technology. Um, and then, of course, impact, the fourth eye is very important. We must look at and also track, you know, diligently what is our positive impact and even negative impact and also disclose it and report it. We have a dedicated sustainability uh, website. Uh, we actually not just uh, uh, disclose or you know report our sustainability performance annually. We even have a quarterly report to update you know our key goals that we set under our sustainability blueprint. Uh, we call it a city a CDL Future Value 2030. And uh, when we do uh, uh, reporting, we actually um, create 
integrated uh, framework that uh, GRI is, is the core, and we also integrated, you know, uh, TCFD, uh, IIRC integrated uh, approach, and also the sustainable development goals and uh, the science based target initiative, as well as the latest is SSV, um, uh, sustainable uh, real estate standards. So we make use of the, you know, all this uh, uh, framework to disclose our ESG performance and uh, communicate with our investors and, and all that. Apart from business strategy, uh, we also have to reimagine the spaces, the products that we are producing, we are designing uh, to tackle climate, social and health challenges. And of course, um, Singapore is very land scarce, we are very small, and we have to look at how we can, you know, uh, really make good use of the space very efficiently. And uh, we have to make use of the airspace, we, we build high, and we also go underground as well. So like this uh, Amber Park on the left-hand side, this is one of our latest development facing the sea. We actually built a track that connects the top floor of three blocks on the 21st story, as like making it into like a jogging track, like even a gym, and uh, with rooftop landscape and amenity 65 percent of our site area are devoted you know for landscape and communal space and uh during lockdown we find all these very useful because you know our home is where we work we live we really entertain and really keep fit so uh these are the you know the future home that we are actually uh already started working on it and health and well-being and definitely are the top priority now looking at green and blue spaces and also looking at how to maintain iaq the, uh, uh, the, uh, the air quality is very important how do we help our you know residents to give them the peace of mind using the paint that it is antibacterial and antifungal. So we are looking at all these to, to, to provide, you know, the comfort to whether home or commercial property. On the right hand side here is actually an integrated precinct that it is one of our uh, latest uh, uh, developments that we are designing and everything. This uh, artist impression has already, you know, uh, a, a clear most of the authorities permit and you can see it is surrounded by green and, um, and water feature that have calming effect for the building users. 60% are, uh, are commercial and 40% are for uh, uh, residential use. And uh, of course, innovation is very important. These are some of the examples, such as like the uh, uh, technology on uh, building technology, the prefabricated, prefinished volumetric construction technologies that we have started in 2014. And uh, within a uh, three years construction period, it helped us to save 55, 50 over 1,000 man days and uh, improve the productivity by 30 to 40 percent. And apart from technology, we also look at how we can integrate and use more of the solar energy. And, and as, uh, South Beach is one of our mixed development. We um, uh, adopt like microclimatic, you know, design and uh, make good use of natural ventilation and lighting and to reduce the use of air condition. And we also make use of like, you know, the rooftop of our residential development to educate our homeowners that we can, you know, apart from green building, we can also increase the use of solar energy. And uh, these are some two of the example on the left. Actually, sometimes when you talk about innovation, it need not to be earth type of technology and uh, building this green wall actually help us to shield the 48 units behind this you know wall uh, uh, by absorbing heat up to three degrees Celsius and over one year's uh, survey we actually really help them to save uh, uh, the use of air condition and also save cost and the right on the the Bolivar 88 is one of our latest development and uh, we make use of um, software and uh, 3d models to make informed decision in, uh, in, uh, in order to increase the natural ventilation and, uh, and reduce heat gain by about 20% and also raise productivity gain by 50%. And uh, innovation cannot stop, you know, and there's no end to it. And we have to really continuously invest in R&D and uh, with partnership. And this is actually the one of the examples that we started in 2018, uh, partnering with our Solar Energy Research Institute in Singapore, combining PPVC 
electricity and also building integrated uh, PV uh, technology because Singapore really have very uh, little you know land for us to build a, a solar plant we need to look at uh, how to integrate it into the building facade we also partner with our local universities to set up two lab one is called the green smart home lab and the other one is tropical technology and we are test bedding some of the new technology the PV and uh, improving the the function the, uh, the yield the harvest of it and also look at how we can improve the comfort and reduce you know uh, uh, heat and noise and and the bacteria inside the, the home as well and uh, as an investor we also look at how we can invest in the VC and uh, we have uh, uh, invested in fifth wall and uh, also uh, some of the invest uh, innovators such as pupil on uh, like a digital twin and a special data and uh, just now I talk about gush paint which is a local invest uh, local social enterprise that come up with uh, paint that it is you know that will improve air quality and the wellness of our occupants we also believe in social enterprises this is a rent free space that the co office space that we offer to new startup that can align with sdg and we have actually offered it as rent free for them and if this is a partnership with undp and a local you know social enterprise uh, agency and uh, when we look at innovation and investment where can we get the funding so we actually uh, started to you know adopt green financing and uh, in 2017 we wrote out the first uh, uh, green bond in Singapore and uh, it is you know a, a two-year fixed rate green bond and that uh, packed onto our um, uh, uh, Republic Plaza which is our headquarters and after that we also uh, secure uh, green loans to help to develop our new development and uh, Last September, we actually came up with a first of its kind SDG innovation loan uh, with a discount element that if you come up with innovation that it is scalable and uh, can go to market to benefit the industry and the bank will, go, we will offer us a, a little bit of a discount uh, from this $250 million loan. And we also invest in educating people, the community. This is actually a zero energy uh, green gallery located in our Singapore Botanic Gardens and showcasing what exactly is green building and how you know solar energy can actually power the, this gallery and make it making it a zero energy building and we also believe in nurturing young mind and uh, this is actually a partnership with our national library board we facilitate we design and uh, you know uh, uh, refurbish this children library into a green mark platinum level and educating you know kids how they can become a green champion in the future and uh, showcasing book titles and, and and all that and uh, the last but not least this is another national platform that CDL initiated again it is zero energy we are opening it in 2016 it's a, a Singapore sustainable sustainable Academy we partner with six government agency 15 founding industry and NGO partner and uh, since uh, the opening about three years now we have organized and hosted events and training courses and uh, about 400 every week we have about you know three events a week uh, reaching out to tens of thousands of people from the industry from public sector private sector and NGO and even the you know, most importantly is actually we establish a youth for climate uh, network as well as women for green network so we reach out to everybody everyone can help to save you know to, to save glacier to also help to you know contribute to a cleaner and greener environment and these are some of our events that engaging a larger community and uh, of course we are business we also have to look at business case and this is our report card after you know all this year more than two decades of sustainability integration the impact is we are being ranked you know a uh, 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 top amongst real estate company in the world in terms of sustainability and this is a very powerful tool for us to access to ESG fund and uh, also uh, sustainable financing and uh, together with a, a larger value chain we hope we can come we are committed to changing the climate and changing the future thank you yeah thank you esther that was amazing um i know one thing for sure when uh, when covid uh, 19 is over i will come and uh, come to, to singapore to, to meet you one time because i want to yes. see those projects that you're working on yes looking forward to it and uh, well we welcome any partners and any friends who would love to come to singapore do contact me or connect to me with on linkedin 
Okay, everybody will. Thank you very much and have a great uh, day there in, uh, in Singapore. And I hope you enjoy the event as well a little bit. Yes, certainly. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Esther. See you soon. Bye-bye.